Hello everyone. I am Dr. Bhavya Adant, second year resident from Dr. D.Y. Patel Medical College and Research Center, Pune, here to present on the topic evaluation of congenital brain anomalies MRI series under the guidance of Professor Dr. Tushar Kalakar, sir. So introduction, the congenital brain defects are abnormalities in the brain that are present at the birth. The defect typically affects the bone and the soft tissue in the head and the spine. More than 2,000 different congenital malformations of the brain have been described in the literature and the incidence is reported to be about 1% of all the live births. MRI is very useful in studying these malformations. So the incidence, there is 2 to 3 percent of the incidence in the newborn which increases to four to six percent by the age of five years 40 to 60 percent of all the birth defects are usually unknown that cause is unknown uh, the genetic and chromosomal causes contribute to about 10 to 15 percent environmental causes contribute to 10 percent and other multifactorial causes contribute to 20 to 25 percent so the aim and objective of the study is to Find, uh, to study the MRI findings of the congenital brain anomalies, a simplified classification of the congenital anomalies affecting the brain, followed by the images and the imaging finding of the common and certain interesting or important congenital anomalies of the brain. The study was done on 15 patients in a time span of six months who presented to us with complaints of seizures, developmental delay, weakness, learning disabilities, impaired cognition, vomiting, and irritability. MRI was performed by 1.5 Tesla, Philips Achieva. So in this table, as we can see that there are specific anomalies and the timing at which it can be detected. In the dorsal induction, there is cherry malformation, which is detected by four weeks of the gestation. Encephalocele are detected by five to six weeks of the gestation. Holoproencephaly, in ventral induction, there are three diseases. Holoproencephaly, which is detected at five to six weeks of the gestation. Septooptic dysplasia is detected by six to seven gestational weeks. Danding of the malformation is detected by seven to ten gestational weeks. Uh, in neural uh, proliferation and histogenesis, there are three diseases. Neurofibromatosis, which is detected by five weeks to six months of the gestation. Tuberous sclerosis is also detected by five weeks to six months of the gestation. And primary hydrocephaly is detected by three months or later in life. In under migration, there are four diseases, Schizencephaly, which is detected by two months of the gestation, Agyria and Pachygyria are detected by three months of the gestation, Grey matter heterotropias are detected by five months of this gestation, and dysgenesis of the corpus callosum is detected by two to five months of the gestation. So complete corpus callosal agenesis with colposephaly. So these are the sagittal T2 weighted and axial T2 weighted images in which we can see that both the ventricles are separated with the dilated trigon and the occipital horn of the lateral ventricle with complete absence of the corpus callosum. So these are the uh, in unilateral open lip schizencephaly. Uh, we can, uh, these are uh, T1 and T2 axial weighted images in which we can see a well defined triangular cystic lesion which is extending from the uh, margin of the body of the left lateral ventricle to the cortex, having a density of the CSA which is hypo intense on T1 weighted images and hyper intense on T2 weighted images. In incomplete lysencephaly, uh, these are the axial, coronal and sagittal images in which we can see that there are areas of patchy and area mainly in the parieto-occipital uh, lobe bilaterally and shallow sulci are noted in the frontal lobes bilaterally. In annual cherry malformations, these are the T2-weighted uh, sagittal and coronal images in which we can see that there is tonsillar herniation and uh, syringohydromyelia in the upper cervical region. Findings are consistent with Arnold Chari malformation. So this is a variant of the Dandy Walker malformation in which we can see a well-defined cystic lesion in the posterior fossa in the midline, 
which is hyper intense on uh, T1 weighted images and hyper intense on T2 weighted images. They are dilated both lateral ventricles with very little cerebral parenchyma, which appears thinned out. The third ventricle is not seen separately, which is compressed by the posterior fossa cyst. Vermis of the cerebellum appears ab absent. Tegmentum is not elevated, and the posterior fossa midline cyst is causing aqueductal stenosis and hydrancephaly. So the conclusion of my study is MRI provides a detailed multiplanar imaging and exquisite contrast differentiation, which is essential for classification and determination of the congenital malformations of the brain. Knowledge of normal brain development is essential for correctly, uh, correctingly identifying the abnormalities. The classification of congenital malformations is continually changing with new insights into the brain development. As the genetics of the congenital malformation become more complex, MRI can provide important information on specific brain phenotypes. These are the references which I took for my study. Thank you.